Welcome, and thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Crexy Podcast, an insider's look at all things commercial real estate. In this show, we cover a broad range of topics that cater to CRE newcomers and industry leaders alike. Today, I'm your host, Matt Kors, Supply Growth Director at Crexy. If you're not familiar with us, we're a comprehensive digital commercial real estate platform designed to empower CRE professionals with the tools they need to discover and transact properties. Today, we're thrilled to sit down with Phil Tomlinson of Commercial Properties, Inc. But before we dive in, a little bit about our guest. Phil is the Vice President of Sales and Leasing with Commercial Properties, Inc. in their Scottsdale office. He's got over 21 years experience specializing in the sales, leasing, uh, and investments in the office and retail space. He's established an aggressive performance standard for his team to reach continuous growth through various market conditions, and his hard work, integrity, and dedication have proven beneficial to his clients' success. Phil's currently active in several professional organizations, including Corfac International, uh, which we met last week in Vegas, actually, for their, their conference, uh, and he's been a speaker at many other conventions and conferences there. Phil, thanks so much for, for joining us today. How's everything going in Scottsdale? Thanks. Uh, things are going good in Scottsdale. It's beautiful weather out. Couldn't agree with you more, man. I, I was actually out there for the Waste Management Open last month, and I, I personally just love Arizona. It's, it's awesome out there this time of year. Yeah, it was nice. Did you get to go to the 16th hole? I did. Yeah, we. I went on Wednesday, so kind of a more subtle day. I, I feel like versus the you know Friday, Saturday when it's getting later in the tournament. I was out there Friday, and it was crazy. <laughs> it was still crazy on Wednesday. It just I feel like it's not as full gear, if that makes sense. Yeah, with everything going on, I didn't expect to see that big of a crowd. It was uh, it was intense. Always a good time. Always a good time. Well, well, thanks again for joining us. We're, we're really excited to kind of dig in here. So I figure let's, um, you know, let's jump in here to the first topic. I'd love to begin asking, you know, kind of some questions about the career path and how you got to where you were today. Um, I know you've, you've been in the game for 20 plus years. So, you know, let's take it back. Maybe some of the interests first and foremost of how you got in the commercial real estate space. Yeah, so I ended up owning my own uh, residential firm. We had a small commercial division. I had a buddy of mine, I was trying to get him to take over the commercial division for years. He kept asking me to leave the company and come jump over into commercial real estate. And uh, so we went back and forth about three years. And uh, at that time, 2009, 2010, you know, the Mm. foreclosure market was huge. Um, it was not fun anymore. The hours were crazy. Uh, so I ended up um, handing the reins over to my partner and I decided to go 100% just commercial, uh, let go of the residential, which was a, a good move for me. And actually, I think it saved my marriage. <laughs> it allowed me to have time to volunteer with the uh, school's kids. And for those who don't know, if you're in residential, you're working 70 hours a week. You're seven days a week as well. In commercial, we don't work nights, we don't work weekends. So my wife couldn't believe it when I'm home on a Saturday. And she's like, shouldn't you be working? And uh, so yeah, we were able to start planning camping trips and um, got involved more of the kids school. So yeah, it was it was a good move for us and uh, really enjoy uh, commercial night and day from when I was doing in residential. So that that's a that's a great story. I mean, just bringing it back that far from the you know oh oh seven oh eight oh nine days until today. I mean, obviously, you've seen a lot uh, of change um, over the years. So that that's awesome. How about the the triple net side of things versus and, and office too? I think um, are the main focuses for you versus like multifamily or industrial. Any particular uh, reason you got in those or any specific events on maybe why you went that route? So what I did is when I jumped into the commercial real estate scene, I. I was encouraged by a few of the brokers that were here to say, hey, play in all of it. See what you like. Mm -hmm. So I was able to jump into multifamily, play land, did industrial uh, office and uh, retail. Um, was really good on the office side. Didn't really care for the multifamily or land. Um, we had a really big um, industrial group here. So I chose to play more in the office. The funny part was, as I'm doing office, um, I had office users who needed the retail exposure. So I began showing them all these retail buildings. Before you knew it, I had retail owners saying, you're one of the few brokers consistently showing my building. Would you list my building? And uh, over within a couple of years, I was doing 40% retail and 60% office. 
And uh, you develop really good relationships in the commercial world. And so I had quite a few of these uh, owners that also owned industrial space. So they were like, hey, would you jump in and help us sell our um, industrial condos? And I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll play in that. And so then I'm, you know, got people who notice I have industrial buildings. And so now I'm helping them show. So those are probably the top three I play in now is the industrial, the retail, and the office. Um, about three and a half years ago, um, I wanted to be able to get more into the investment sector. Uh, that was where Crexy came in. And I was looking for a platform that um, that was a little bit different. And in my mind, hopefully it was better than what I was um, experiencing with um, uh, CoStar and uh, LoopNet at the time. So yeah, so that gave me another option. And um, it was awesome. It, that actually catapulted me more into the investment scene. So, and one of the reasons it did that was because I was able to see investments across the country, not just in my uh, county here in Arizona, Maricopa County. That that's awesome, and obviously, thank you for uh, the shout out there, Phil. I, and I, I gotta, you know, give one right back to you for Commercial Properties Inc. Because I, I've been working in the Western U.S. since we launched here at Crexy over six and a half years ago, and and you guys have been one of our earliest supporters. And I, you know, we've done many trips out to Arizona, and always love visiting you guys. So it's it's been great to kind of see the the reciprocity there for sure on on both ends of the spectrum. And and I know you guys have helped us grow too in the in the market there. So that that's been great. Um, yeah, well, it, it was nice actually seeing you guys attend the uh, Corpac mm -hmm. conferences five years ago. And, um, you know, we have multiple uh, sponsor breaks during the conference. And so I, there was just two people there, I believe, is the actual, you know, founder and uh, an assistant. And so, yeah, you guys have been around for a while. So it took me a couple of years before I jumped on board. But uh, at that, by that time, we'd already seen your face a few times at the conferences. So you guys were not, not unfamiliar to us. No, it's been, it's been fun. I mean, my, you know, I, I've done the road shows many times and that, that Corfac one, I've been there once or twice for sure. And that, that's always a good one. Great group. And, um, you know, from people all over the country, all over the world. So it's, it's a great group to be involved in on, on both ends, I'm sure as a broker, but as us, as, you know, kind of a third party sponsor, we, we love it too. Um, a ton of fun there. To and, and, and for those who, who don't know what Corfac International is, it's a group of uh, brokers and firms, um, literally from all over the world. We come together uh, for best practices and um, to develop relationships so that when uh, something comes up outside of my state, I'm able to have someone who's competent, who I already have a relationship with, who can uh, jump in and uh, help me get my deals across the finish line. Love it. That that's, uh, that's a great thing in this industry for sure, just to be able to share share business and share knowledge like that. that yeah. That's awesome. Is it, I mean, if you, you know, even to bring it back to the question about just when you started off, you know, back then versus now, was there, was there like an, an I guess I don't want to say institutions, but like, you know, memberships you could get involved with like that to help you learn the business kind of more or less when you, when you were getting it taken off? No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I, the, one, of the, one of the brokers who had owned a company for years, I sat down at coffee and I'm like, okay, you know, if I really want to leverage what I'm doing here in commercial real estate, what do you suggest? And he goes, yeah, there's a couple of books. There's a couple of courses. There's, you know, a couple of coaches that maybe you could jump in and work with. He goes, but he goes, even if you listen to everything they have on at the time, you know, the DVDs and, and what they were doing on YouTube, he goes, it's not going to make sense until you're doing the deal. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just the experience, yeah, which is great. So when I go to these conferences um, at Corfac, you know, it's an open book, you know, we're the only Corfac firm in Arizona. So they feel pretty safe, you know, just saying, Hey, here's everything that we're doing. Here's how we're doing it. And uh, that was, that was a great school. We had um, my very first one was in Vegas and what's funny, you know, six, seven years later, we're back in Vegas again. But um, at that conference, they had four different brokers who were just sharing what they were doing in their own personal uh, commercial real estate business. Uh, one of the guys was walking us through how to use an iPad. And that was when iPads were just coming out. You know, it was like, holy crap. It, it was interesting to see how technology was jumping in. It was because of uh, that conference right there that I'm like, wow, I would love to learn how I could, you know, use technology to uh, leverage my business. So I don't know. It, 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 for me, it's, um, 
it, I think it catapulted me to get a lot further, a lot faster here at uh, commercial properties. Yeah. And, you know, a, a funny thing about that, I just, you know, think back on our early days here at Crexy and still, you know, seven years in, I still feel like we're kind of early, but um, just with looking at technology firms and what they're doing, whether it be, you know, Facebook early on, they're obviously one of the bigger ones or Google in general or, or comp firms like Airbnb um, or, or LinkedIn. Um, you know, we used a lot, we use a lot of that stuff day in, day out because that's what people use every day, um, whether it be in commercial real estate or other businesses. And we figure if, if you're not using it for commercial real estate, we can help catapult it to get ahead. So that that's a lot of the the stuff that we're implementing day by day to help to help brokers like yourself out, which I think is um, you know getting feedback from from people like yourself just helps us. Um, so it, that's great. That's great. I think you know that and, and kind of like to to play to play back with what you've seen over the past you know twenty years in in Phoenix in particular. Um, it's the market's blowing up right now, right? Like in, in your, in your area. Um, I, I bet a lot of that's due to technology and people just being able to leverage, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm here, but maybe I want to invest in there. Um, you know, is there any, for anyone out there looking to invest in, in your market is, is outside of, you know, maybe not knowing what it is, they can just see it on a, a site like Crexy, like anything in particular that you think, you know, someone should consider when they're looking in, in Arizona or Phoenix. Um, that's a loaded question. That is a loaded question. <laughs> Every time we're on the phone with someone who's looking to invest, whether they they've been doing it for years or or they're they're brand new, um, you know, we we always have a lot of qualifying questions to find out what their what their goals are, what they're looking for, how scared are they? Do they you know are they worried about risk, right? Um, how involved do they want to be? How close are they going to be to the location? Are they going to live, you know, in Arizona? Um, or are they living somewhere, you know, outside of Arizona, you know, another state? And how far and how long would it take them to get to the property if they needed mm -hmm. to come and check up on it? So, uh, we, yeah, we just sit down with all the investors and we ask all of our questions. We find out what their hot buttons are, how soon, you know, some of these people are coming into a 1031, but not realizing the constraints on their time and that they have to pick three properties, you know, you know, have them dialed in within 45 days. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Every day um, at my job is is unique and different, and it's not boring at all. But I think if if people are looking to invest, the hardest thing to do, and most of us brokers were really busy, um, and we have the best intentions, and someone's jumping in saying, "Hey, I need you to help me find something," uh, because a lot of the brokers don't get back with these investors in a timely manner. They feel like I have to go call another broker. And uh, so, you know, one of the questions we're asking is, how many brokers are you talking with right now? And some of them, you know, they like uh, 20 brokers are, are looking for something because they're nervous that they're going to miss out. And wow. they're, they're hoping, you know, so we, we try and let our, our investors know that we've got a whole team. Uh, we send them properties in real time uh, so they're not missing something and that they don't have to worry about calling multiple brokers um, that we've, we've got it set up here, especially using uh, Crexy um, to help them land the investments they need, no matter whether it's known or user and they're looking for their own property to put their business in, or they're looking for a decent return, you know, either here in Arizona or somewhere in the U S. Well, you know, and that, that brings up another interesting point too, because I know it's obviously overall kind of tight with just product out there. Do you see Phoenix being a tighter market than say like a Tucson or a Flagstaff and looking at Arizona, generally speaking? I, I would say that because of our economies of scale with the way that our city is set up with the low tax rate, um, we're an attractive state. Um, the, the whole city is set up on a grid system. And so you can pretty much get anywhere you want in the city pretty quick. Uh, so we, we find that, um, you know, yeah, all, all the surrounding cities in Arizona are, are not as large, but we do attract people from all over the country and Canada and other parts of the world just because, and also the weather's nice here. I mean, if it gets below, you know, 70 degrees, we're putting our jackets on, you know, because we're freezing. <laughs> and, but for other people, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, you know, right now, if I go sit outside, I think it's 72 degrees, 73 degrees and, and for other people, they're sitting in, you know, in snow. Well, so yeah. that's one of the reasons, you know, that, that we, we find people attracted to our state. 
Yeah, for sure. And I mean, that that probably leans on the population growth. I'm sure that that you have, generally speaking, over the past 20 years, have seen well, probably longer than that. But I'm just thinking, you know, uh, yeah. from since you've been in the, the commercial real estate world, I'm from Chicago originally. And I just know since I can remember, you know, aunts and uncles of mine going down there, or just people in general, like the snowbirds, right? Huge population yeah. boom, seasonally, yeah. for sure, but probably, you know, full time as well. Um, is that still, would you say like going on and affecting the the real estate sector as you see it? I, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and for those who aren't familiar with Arizona, you know, you, you take a hour and a half drive and you're in the red rocks and, uh, the scenery is phenomenal, best hiking you've ever had. Uh, you take two and a half hours, go North and now you're skiing right in the mountains and, uh, the, uh, the lakes and the, uh, the weather and, you know, we, we've got so many different types of, um, I would say, amenities for outdoors. It's uh, it's very attractive. Do you think from and, and from from like a potential investor or owner or even tenants coming into the area, do, is that help like with a melting pot of activity? Just because you've got people from all over the country and really the you know North America definitely coming into there. We have land, flat land. <laughs> we have a lot of it. It. Right now, to get from one side of town to the other, even with our freeway system, the you know you're an hour and a half to two hours away, and you're still really in the metro Phoenix Valley, uh, multiple suburbs. But it's yeah. So we we've got we've got enough land that we can still put big box. So we have a lot of big box industrial users coming into town, which of course is a lot of jobs. So our, mm-hmm. our housing boom is, is big. Um, we have so much construction going on here in Arizona in the Phoenix Valley, just because we have the land to support it. You know, I noticed that when I was out there last month, cause I probably hadn't been there for at least six months, if not longer. I think it was April of 2021 was the last time I was out there before this, this February with the waste management open. And I couldn't yeah. believe how much was going on. I, I went downtown for um, a day, the day after I went to the waste management open and the light rail system was going in and I couldn't believe everything that was going on in downtown, the downtown area too. Yeah, we, we really, in the last two years, we've seen a lot of the older parts of town are been revitalized. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they are, they are shaping these buildings and uh, reuse is coming in with um, high end, Offices that have the old, you know, uh, high ceilings, you know, so these buildings are old buildings, but they're converting them into really nice, um, you know, office and uh, retail uses. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing that all over the valley. Would you say too? another question, I guess, um, you know, that, that, that I have is kind of two parts, like top performing asset types in Phoenix and why, but I, I guess it's an assumption I have. I feel like the office market maybe didn't get hit as hard as it did say in Los Angeles where we're sitting, where, you know, it got hit pretty hard out here at the beginnings of COVID. Yeah, it, it, it didn't plummet and fall. It was a flat line, you know, the industrial sector has blown up and is huge when everybody was uh, forced to stay at home. And all of a sudden all these people, needed to ship their products out to people instead of having them come to their stores. Um, that really took the industrial market and everyone's looking for space. I, I literally right now on the leasing side, we have uh, two guys that are in charge of our leasing and we've had 70 leads come in in the last two months. And I would say 80% of those is people looking for industrial space. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But the office market has taken up where we've done a ton of leasing and uh, sales in the office. So that's that's starting to come back. It's not 100% like it was before. But um, yeah, the good news is because we didn't completely have just a huge drop off because it just kind of more flatlined. Everybody was keeping their space and then saying, you know, what am I going to do? And we're seeing a lot of our businesses, um, you know, going back into the office. Uh, we are actually seeing a lot of our bigger office users are expanding and getting more space so that their new formats allow for a bit more, um, you know, social distancing inside the office. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, pivoting a little slightly, I know your team acquires properties and operates as a brokerage as well. 
Um, from from the investment side, like what are what are some key things you've had to keep in mind when sourcing listings for acquisition, especially now as I, I'm sure it's you know a little tighter to find when when you're looking for specific returns and stuff like that. Yeah, we're we're going old school, and uh, we're having to cold call. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, we. You know, I've got a lot of really good relationships and I get a lot of referrals, which I'm grateful for. And, and we do our best to take care of all the referrals that come in. But you're right. I mean, there's not as many you know listings out there. So we are on a daily basis. We're having to cold call. Uh, we have it's not really a contest, but we're doing our best to keep each other, each other accountable on our team. <laughs> how many calls did you make today? I know how that goes. I know exactly how that goes. Yeah. And um, another thing that we had done is to help leverage our time um, because you get to a point where now we have to touch a lot more people to get the same kind of pay. And uh, in order to do that, I, I'm, I'm running out of time. I can't get everything done in a day. You know, um, my partner, Eric, he can't get everything done. Uh, so we ended up jumping in and, and hiring people from the Philippines and their English is fantastic. It doesn't sound like you got someone across the world making a phone call, but we're asking questions, you know, are you, would you be open to selling your, your project, your building? If you, if not, you know, do you uh, want to expand your portfolio and buy others? And if not, do you need help leasing <laughs> your building? And uh, we're getting leads coming in every week for that, but uh, that's, that's been helpful uh, since the inventory is not as high as it used to be. No, that's, that's a, that's a great point there. I mean, yeah, you guys seem, you know, a lot more tech forward than a lot of brokerages we talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. Are you guys seeing, you know, do you use the technology to help you pretty, pretty deeply, both in the brokerage and acquisition side? Yes, I think we are. I mean, we've purchased software that allows us to have the backend information for every person who's using, you know, our purchase or owns a commercial real estate. We can we can find their email, their name, their phone number. So um, it's not cheap, but uh, for us, it's well worth it. So much work was going into finding each person from an entity that we just decided to, to spend the money and buy some software. So, yeah, not every broker is doing that. But for us, it's uh, it's it's repaid itself, uh, you know. 50 fold. And then there's a few other things, you know, that we do. We, we have other softwares that we're keeping track of all of our, our to do's per day. And um, we're also all using Slack to talk with each other sure. uh, versus trying to find, you know, right now I have 315 emails I got to get to. And uh, I'm sure if one of those was someone on my team, I'm not seeing it. So the uh, the Slack on the phone is is easy for us to communicate and get things done. And then we have a really good CRM that we're using as well that is allowing us to track um, every lead. And we have pipelines built in. And it's got phone dialers built in. And so that allows us to uh, not spend as much time um, wondering and trying to find where each other's at. It, it keeps us uh, united and, and synced up. Nice. You guys are you guys are dialed in over there. That's that's for sure. Uh, and we're still playing. I mean, it's. I would say it's not perfect, but it's uh, it's a lot better than it was a year and a half ago. <laughs> that's that's awesome, man. That that's great. That's great. Um, well, hey, to kind of it's kind of similar to the last topic we were talking about. Um, but Phoenix and Arizona have obviously been desire invest desirable investment options in recent years. A lot of capital, I'm assuming you guys see coming out of California. Yeah. Do you do you think it's like the behavior is going to change as we go, you know, during COVID versus post COVID from activity in Phoenix, or is that because I know you guys have kind of been a little more open than other states too that whole time? What do you, what do you think the difference would be there? I think we're going to see even more okay. um, when we finally get a correction. We're all we're all hoping to see a correction, and you know, we're all we're all putting money at the bank so that when the the numbers come back down to numbers we're used to. It may not never get as low as it was back in 2010 through 2013, but mm -hmm. uh, we're all hoping for, you know, some sort of a correction where, um, you know, we see the cap rates go up, you know, we see properties are much more affordable. My, uh, my sister ended up buying a property a couple of years back. And uh, what's so funny is uh, she's in residential real estate and she's like, you know, I just sold a two-bedroom um, 
townhouse. <laughs> she goes for more money than I spent for my four bedroom. Home. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So the, the, the numbers are so crazy that I think when the market drops down, a lot of people who are holding on to their investments are going to start jumping in and taking advantage. And so that'll, that'll be a lot of fun, but I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of change. We'll just see a more influx as the market, you know, goes back down. Any, you know, kind of the same, the same vein here in a crystal ball question, like any, any thoughts on predictions and the Phoenix net lease market in particular in the coming years, short-term versus long-term? No, I, I don't have any it's predictions. Too tough, too tough to tell. I, I've made quite a few and I think I was wrong in all of them. So. <laughs> I, That's uh, fair. We, 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 we see things that are coming and flying at us and we do our best to try and figure out what would be, um, you know, in, in our investors' best interest. So we, we try and give the best advice we can for what we, we see is happening. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I honestly think, in my own opinion, that the way the market's going right now, it'll, it'll go this way throughout the entire year. And maybe sometime next year, we'll see some things start moving. Yeah. No, for sure. I, 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 I couldn't agree with you more there, man. It's, it's yeah, been, there's, there's it's too been much, wild. yeah, too much shortages going on for anything to move yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, do you, do you see like, ten, how about tenant activity? Is that, is that still high on your end too? And all, all things you guys are working at more or less leasing going on, or I know on the industrial side, you said it's, it's crazy. So yeah, on the leasing side. Um, well, as you know, too, I mean, People's lives change. Something comes up. Um, a partnership dissolves. There's mm -hmm. a divorce. Someone dies, and so yeah, we, we there's always something moving on that end. Um, you know, the the funny part is is trying to just communicate to the tenants about what their expectations were when they were thinking about doing this three years ago to today. Yeah, it's it's right now. If you want to think about it, you've lost your opportunity, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you need to get, uh, we had a group that needed to get the uh, corporate approval. <laughs> we're like, we're like, we're not even going to start there. If, if you, we need to figure out a way to get that corporate approval the same day, or it's, it's going to be really hard on you because you're going to be losing every opportunity that you're coming across that you like. I didn't even think about that stuff. Yeah. You could show them 10 spaces and it's like, Hey guys, if you, if you're not ready to, to submit some in, letter of intent on this, it's going to be gone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, they're all wanting a, a, a big deal where the owners aren't giving as much as they were, you know, and they're thinking the owners should give more because the rates are higher. But are you seeing, are you seeing on the, in, in the office side, any leasing you're doing, like, are they owners more, you know, like amendable on, on shorter term leases versus longer term leases now, or is that kind of gone out as well? Are, are people looking to want to secure that space for longer just because of it being tight out there? Yes. And yes. Yeah. And yes. It just depends who the owner is. Gotcha. I've got owners who literally are not wanting to, you know, do anything over three years. Um, and, and that's hard to do as a broker because, you know, if you're doing a one to three year deal, you know, you're paying for your gas. Yeah. Um, there's too much, you know, too much movement going on in the building it makes it difficult um we have other owners where you know they're on the medical side saying i want a 12-year lease and everybody who's going to come in they're doing a 12-year lease or they're not coming in right wow so it just it depends who you're working with what the owner's you know background is how many properties they own what their expectations are um you know whether they're moving out or they're setting up the building to sell right so we've got we've got buildings that we're leasing up to sell. That's one of our strengths and our expertise. And in doing this, you know, we're, we're more or less telling every tenant coming in, you're doing a five-year deal or you're not coming into the project, you know, five, five years or more. That's a, that, that's, I guess the cool part about the space is like every building for you has got to look like a different business plan, just depending on where the owner is and their, their useful, I don't want to say life of the property, but just what their business plan initially was versus what is, how it's changed today. Yeah. And you know, what's available in that area. I ended up leasing up an office condo, roughly 5,000 square feet. And um, we ended up doing a 10 year deal on that building. And, uh, and we kept firm on our rate, but we had, I would say if you look within a mile 
there was only two or three projects available, including mine. So we were able to, to be firm in our price and get a long-term tenant. And what's funny is the value is literally three times more than what the owner paid for it. Wow. <laughs> you know, because of the price point we got and uh, the long-term and the, the health of the tenant. So yeah, it's fun. It's nothing's sure. really, it's not as cookie cutter, you know? So it uh, makes our job interesting and fun and uh, enjoyable. Do you see too from that? I mean, just from that that story too, people willing to go outside of where they want to be now just to get a, a you know specifics on their building versus maybe being in this. I got to be in this area. Maybe I'll go a yeah. little bit further out to get more space or more newer space or whatever it may be. Yeah, I'm working with a dental group who wants to purchase some pads so they can build an eight thousand square foot two story building. And we have now moved almost 10 miles <laughs> wow. outside of what they wanted to try and, you know, locate what they need. So, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's crazy. We're, we're, we're seeing people being a bit more flexible. Yep. Got and, it. you know, for our investors, you know, we literally, if we're not sending them properties within a couple of weeks, the conversation is, would you like to consider expanding your search? <laughs> Because we're just not finding exactly what it is you're looking for. But if you'd be flexible enough to, you know, increase your price point or, you know, go out a few more miles um, or maybe include um, a different property type that could still, you know, get you what you need, would you be willing to do that? And we're actually seeing a lot of these investors are being, you know, they're having to be flexible or they're not finding inventory. Doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, that's, I think I'm not from Phoenix again. I'm, I'm from Chicago, but every time I drive out there from Los Angeles, Portillo's is a huge, um, you know, great, great food, um, plug here, but I, we, we love it being from Chicago and, you know, there's a lot of good Chicago food options out there. And I think probably cause it's, it's West in the, you know, I don't think it's even Phoenix, maybe Goodyear, I want to say, but there's like a Portillo's out there that I always stop in on my way out when I do the drive. And yeah. I eat and I'm ready. And then I'm like, okay, we're st we've still got like 45 minutes to go until we get to either, you know, going by the Camelback corridor or going out to Scottsdale. So it's, I, I, I'm assuming it's still growing pretty, pretty good out there, right? Because of that, because of the amount of space you guys have. Yeah, we, we, a few years back, we put in a freeway called the Loop 303. And if you're in Arizona, we've, we've got a smaller loop, mm -hmm. an outer loop, and then a, bigger outer loop and the 303 is the, the really large outer loop and for a while literally you're driving and you're like why is this freeway here there's like there's like nothing going on and then within a couple of years it's uh you know all brand new restaurants you know a ton of industrial going up you know and portillo's of course is you know <laughs> we're we're seeing a lot of these restaurant chains from all over the country uh you know dropping in and really cool outside retail areas for shopping and hanging out. So it's, it's nice when you get to be a part of the, uh, the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you, so you don't have to drive into the, you know, the heart of town to, to experience nightlife. It's, 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 it's now going out to the outer skirts of uh, the Valley. That's awesome, man. That That's great to hear. Uh, well, you know, Hey, I, I know we've been, we've been going for a while here, so I, I want to make sure we, you know, we wrap up in a timely manner, but just generally speaking again, back on the crystal ball question, do you, you know, just, I feel like Phoenix has obviously been a, a Arizona, I should say is a great place. Just us being in California, we're seeing people as well as businesses going there. Um, it's no, it's no secret or no surprise because of the, the economic conditions. Um, but is, you know, with the population growth as well from, other factors. I mean, do you think there's a market bubble coming? And if there is, do you think Phoenix would be one to get burst on, or is it probably going to be pretty strong because it's just a, a, you know, a melting pot of people moving and back moving there? Yeah, I'm not positive. I know that we're one of the first to get hit, but we're also one of the first to recover. Okay. Um, what I what I would say is, um, if you're a broker and um, and you want to be able to help the investors that you're working with uh, at a higher level. I would say if you're not in Crexy, I would consider getting Crexy. I know that right now I've got, I think, 93 investors that we're helping and that we're working with. Wow. And we're able okay. to get them properties in real time 
Uh, we have our searches set up so that every 24 hours, if anything new is coming on the market, we're able to summarize that property. We're able to take the offering memorandum or the brochure and uh, put it into a link so that we can easily send out this information to our clients. So uh, yeah, we've got anywhere from 35 to 150 emails going out every single day so that every investor um, is able to see what's coming on the market. The best part about that as well is, um, you know, because we're doing cold calling, we also have access to our off market stuff. Um, but yeah, so all of the listings that we have go into Crexy. I'm on Crexy Pro. So I'm using it for not just the sales side, I'm using it for the um, leasing side as well. And uh, it, I think for us, it's, um, we're one of the few teams uh, that are able to help investors find product they're looking for in a much quicker manner than what most brokers are able to get to. So, but yeah, Crexy, I would, I would say that um, also for brokers um, and even investors, if you've got a, a broker who's working and using Crexy and uh, you can't find what you're looking for in your state, the next, the nice part about Crexy that we're taking advantage of is I can see every investment across the country. Mm -hmm. And so we're encouraging our, our investors, hey, if you don't like the cap rates in Phoenix, because like you're talking about, you know, how's the market doing here? It's doing fantastic, you know, but that means our cap rates are going down. We're starting to see office condos at a five and a five and a half cap. That's crazy. We haven't seen wow. that ever, you know. Okay. They were they were six and a half to seven, but now we're, we're, we're seeing movement and people are buying them at those cap rates. But if you don't want that cap rate, you don't want to be at five, five and a half, you know, we can easily stretch that out and do states that are surrounding uh, Arizona. And uh, I had one investor where he was, doing stuff in Vegas and the deal he was in was 7 million and it had hair. And he goes, Hey, if you could find me something better, I jumped into Crexy, found him 25 properties, 10 of them. He liked better. We ended up helping him land product in Montana, uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas. Um, ended up doing a deal in Texas and uh, you know, all over the state here of Arizona. So uh, Crexy has been huge where I was able to, to land this investor, all $10 million dollars, um, through our, our team, just because I had access to these properties and I could find them quickly and easily through uh, Crexy. So I'm a, I'm a big believer. I'm, I'm honored to be on your uh, podcast, but uh, you guys have done a good job making really good software that makes it easy for us brokers to do our job and do it well and, and make money. So um, someone had asked me, you know, hey, you know, is it worth it for me to invest in, in Crexy? And I'm just... <laughs> I'm going, well, I've paid for my Crexy account for the next 25 years. So I'm like, sure, I'm okay with it. And, you know, it was it was a tool that I needed that helped me leverage what I was doing and it uh, paid off well. So uh, thanks for letting me jump in and be on the podcast. Well, Phil, thank you so much for that shout out. We we greatly appreciate that. And, you know, you guys have helped us grow um, just with feedback you're giving and stuff like that. So please keep it coming. And any obviously any brokers out there, if you're not familiar with us, please check us out at crexy.com and any investors out there too, come check us out. Um, but we love the plug, you know, one, one last question I'd, I'd ask you too. And, and I'm um, just, I always like to ask this, like for newcomers coming into the space, any feedback on what you'd have for them? Um, you know, if, if, is it a good time to get into commercial real estate? And I know you've been in it for a while, so you've probably seen a lot of ups and downs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, if you're hoping for someone just to hand you a deal, this is not the uh, <laughs> this is not the job for you. If you're willing to jump out there in Canvas and uh, make relationships and cold call, and um, you know have hard conversations, um, it's a phenomenal job. It's the best job I've ever had. Um, you know, there's a lot of math. You're talking to a lot of attorneys, but overall, it's it's a really good. I would say it gives you the most flexible, the most freedom for any job I've ever had. You know, I'm able to travel. I'm able to have a lot of free time with my wife. Um, at the same time, you know, run a really good, you know, uh, business uh, that's very profitable, but very fun. And um, but it doesn't, you know, I'm not sucked into where I'm working seven days a week anymore. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not losing my mind. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would say if you're just starting out. Um, the best advice is always to find someone else who's in it 
and uh, see if there's a way you can sit underneath them because you'll learn the fastest. Uh, you're praying for as much hell as you can get the first year because you will learn a ton and uh, it'll allow you to catapult yourself uh, faster on the learning curve. So. Love it. That's that's awesome. Thank, thanks for the feedback for all our listeners out there, the, the younger audience, sure. I should say. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, Phil, th thanks again for joining us and sharing your insights, especially on just, you know, really important, timely topics, I would say, with what's going on. Um, we we yeah. obviously appreciate your time. We know you're busy. Um, so thanks for, for taking today to sit down with us. Just as a, as a shout out for yourself, you know, where can people find you at? Email, social media, phone number, anything along those lines? Yeah. So um, because I was able to leverage uh, commercial real estate, um, I ended up just picking a, a website called uh, Leveraged CRE. Um, it was just me trying to find a way to um, show people how they can leverage uh, their commercial real estate. So if you go to leveragedcre.com, um, all my contact information is in there. It's got my the company, Commercial Properties Incorporated. It's got our team, um, who I am. And um, we're, we're really big on uh, sharing insights and uh, knowledge. So we, we do write our own articles since we have a ton of articles that anywhere from 1031 Exchange to even ideas and helps for leasing for tenants and uh, investments across the board. So that would be the easiest place, uh, Matt, for them to, uh, to find me. Awesome. Leveragedcre.com. Leveragedcre.com. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, again, back to leveraging your technology there, man. You're, you're, you're on top of it. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, thanks to everyone who tuned in today. If you enjoyed the episode, please don't miss the next one. It's visit gogo.crexi.com slash podcast and sign up to get our next episode delivered straight to your inbox. Um, and of course, if, if you're in the commercial real estate community and have not um, familiarized yourself with Crexi, again, crexi.com. Of course, you can also subscribe to the Crexi podcast on your favorite podcast app and check out our YouTube channel for video recordings of each episode. Thank you so much. Uh, it's Friday, so have a great weekend, everyone out there, and be sure to tune in next time. Mm -hmm.